Okay. Hello. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. We're a couple minutes late. We were having a couple, I don't know, technical difficulties. Um, but welcome to Labyrinth's um, Twitch stream. We're back today to talk about game schooling with our ABCs and one, two, threes of game schooling. And um, I'm Kathleen. I own Labyrinth Games and Puzzles. And I'm joined today again by my game schooling education team, uh, Melissa and Rich. Um, should we go? Uh, I don't know. If you need to know who we are, go back and look at last week. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, tonight is Melissa's. Uh, she's very excited because Melissa actually used to be a science teacher and we're going to do science yes. tonight. Um, so basically, we're just going to let Melissa talk all night and we're <laughs> going to sit here and do what she tells us and, and it'll games. all work out. Yep, yeah. and we'll play games, which is really fun. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please make sure to chat with us. I don't have access to the chat tonight. I didn't set up a computer, but Melissa is in charge of keeping watch at the chat and we are happy to discuss things if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, I love science. Um, I always have, except for I think in middle school, I wasn't super crazy oh. about science. Um, but uh, there are a ton of games that deal with science. And I know, especially um, in recent years, uh, schools have cut a lot of their science education. So I think games, even if we weren't currently, um, you know, schooling virtually for the most part, games are a great way to fill in science education that kids sometimes don't get in school. Mm -hmm. um, so Melissa, why don't you tell us a little bit about the general concept of game schooling and um and scientifically experimental um yeah that <laughs> talk about science okay yeah so talk science um briefly uh we did talk last week about what game schooling is but basically game schooling is using games and toys to help reinforce educational concepts that you're trying to teach your kids um especially with science reinforce is the key word they're probably not going to be teaching them any brand new concepts just from playing a game with them, but it is fabulous to go over new concepts with them or introduce them to new ideas without like kind of beating them over the head with it and being like, here, read this book about, about whatever, about butterflies. Um, so they can play a game instead and maybe get interested in it and maybe not, and that's okay. Um, so I am going to turn it over to Rich, who is going to talk about our first game for our youngest kiddos. Yeah, so this is a version of a game called Concept. Um, this is Concept Kids. Concept is a really cool party game about uh, sort of getting an idea across, like playing charades without dancing. What makes this one really engaging is that it's themed around animals, and kids love animals. Uh, most adults do too. And what you're going to be trying to do is using these different colorful cards that have uh, you want close up camp? that have pictures. I just realized that I have the cards set up here for the game that I want to run real quick. So I don't want to show those off. <laughs> I'll show off one of the other cards in the box. Um, yeah, there's, close -up there's some cards that are rainbow cards, which are mythological creatures. There are some cards that are red cards, which are uh, cards that are not often talked about early on in school. Oh, it's a sloth. It's a yeah, sloth. Yeah. Sloths. sloths are the best. And then there's other cards that have blue borders, and the game recommends that you start off with those because those are usually going to be animals that we learn about either in fables or in uh, stories that kids know or just talk about early on in, in school when we're learning our letters and things. So we've got an alligator or a crocodile, I'm not sure which, um, right here in our picture. <laughs> uh, so to get the concept across, the way you're playing the game is with these uh, little squares that you're going to set on this board that shows different attributes. So if I put this one here, from the pictures, you can see this little spot isn't moving very fast. This one's kind of picking up speed. And this one is going really fast. So that means I think that this animal I'm trying to tell you about is especially fast. Um, the catch is I'm not really supposed to use my words or my body to tell you these things. I'm just supposed to use the little orange squares I have here and put them down. So maybe it's really fast and it has spots. Um, and over time, hopefully people will figure out which animal I'm talking about. Um, 
maybe what does it eat? I don't know. So we can take it over here to this plate. Uh, it's really Is it an herbivore or carnivore? And you can teach them words for herbivore and carnivore. Exactly. So uh, it's kind of a taxonomy game where we're classifying. So uh, is it small, medium, or giant? Hmm. The giant spot makes me very happy. <laughs> and uh, it can have hooves. Oops. Can have hooves hmm. or claws. Or legs. Are you doing one? I'm doing one from my head. But oh, okay. Okay. Well, we're going to play one. Sure. See if anybody out there uh, can guess what we're doing. Yeah. So. Okay. So are we starting a new one, or we keep going with this one? No. Well, no. We want to finish. No. No. What animal am I thinking of? What okay. if you cheat? <laughs> I just keep changing it as we go. <laughs> so the cards definitely keep you honest. <laughs> okay. So it eats meat, and it's medium size, and it's spotted, and it has four legs, and it's fast. Mm -hmm. And it's fast. Is it a cheetah? It is. Oh man, you got it right away. I was gonna say dog. <laughs> it could be a dog. Could, could have be been a dog. dog. Then I would have had to maybe tell us where it lived to narrow it down. Yeah. Um, okay. No peeking. You so this time I'm gonna use look. a card. Um, Do you want to show it on the close-up cam? Show it on sure. Close yeah. Cam, if, if anybody wants to see, you've got. Okay. So then they can't help guess. It's true. That's that's the animal there. And now I'm gonna start giving some hints. Okay. Um, what are our hints, Rich? It flies. Ooh. Does it? It does loopy flying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after ask? each hint, if you want, you can make one guess. Oh. And this oh. is a great because the kids love to just yell stuff out. An eagle. Oh, it flies and it's in the water. A uh, seagull. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Sylvia, Sylvia Bus, yes, we will be listing the names and age ranges of the uh, featured games. So um, if you're watching along right now, we are playing a couple of rounds of Concept this Kids. This is Concept Kids. Yeah. It's four plus, um, two to 12 players, and 20 minutes long, give or take a couple of minutes. One of the things that I love about Concept Kids is this is a good one that you can obviously play over Zoom if you're showing um, what you're picking out to kids in a classroom or friends or whatever. This is very easy to play over mm -hmm. Zoom if people are on your Zoom call and can guess some things. So it's green, it's flying, and it likes water. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Is it a fish? Is it a flying fish? Um, green, and it has a beak. Is it a duck? Duck. Yes. Oh <laughs> man, she got me again. <laughs> duck. Yeah. Here's the picture. Oh. So it's not our eyes. It's, <laughs> so the pictures do have some <laughs> some interesting choices for the eye colors of some of the animals. Uh, one time I had one kid uh, who had a bumblebee card with blue eyes, put blue down as the first color. Uh, and then we had to talk about, well, some of the cartoons here aren't perfectly accurate, uh, <laughs> but it's still nonetheless a really great way to start talking about the different animals and maybe where they live and whether they come out at night or during the day um, and what they eat. Um, so, so, oh, and so something else that can be fun to do with this, if you have really little kids, you can take out the guessing element of it, entire, uh, of it entirely. And let's say we have a, I would say that's a chameleon or a lizard. You can have them go through and say, well, let's talk about it. Is a lizard fast or slow? Do you think a lizard is an herbivore or a carnivore? Well, you know, where do you think a lizard lives? So you can talk about it together and then they can come up with answers, which might help them, you know, ease into the game a little bit if they are reluctant to just try and guess. Because sometimes kids don't like not knowing what the thing is that they're trying to guess. Yeah, for sure. I, I really enjoy this yeah. game. I also think this is a really fun game. It has a whole bunch of cards with different animals on it. But if you're studying a certain area of the world or, you know, a certain, um, I don't know, deserts or, or, you know, a certain climate or something, you can actually make your own cards. And really, it's pretty neat because then you're talking about, you know, what kind of legs does it have? Does it have hooves? Does it have claws? All these different things and can um, actually kind of 
tailor it to some of the more um, kind of all together learning of if you're learning in different climates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Would we and, like to do another card or should we? I don't know. Keep things moving? Would somebody else like to be the hint giver? I would be the hint giver. Okay. Because okay. well, she, she keeps getting them. Now I have a chance. <laughs> can I beat Rich? Okay. I'm not going to show the audience what this one is. So if okay. they guess, they can try and guess. So y'all can try and guess too. All right. Okay. But it is not a it chameleon. It is not a chameleon. Or a duck. Um, it flies. Another flying thing. A, a oh. flying thing that likes water again? Yes. Seagull. No. <laughs> hmm. I love seagulls. And it's a bird, or it has a two and legs. two legs. So it's flying a water bird, a pelican. I wonder where it Not lives. Not a pelican. I wonder where it lives too. Uh, In the savanna? savanna. Well, or in a prairie. That looks like a marsh to me. Yeah, marsh. A bird, mm. a water bird. What color? It's during the it day. Eats meat. It eats meat. Mm -hmm. What are a bird that a eats meat? It's not a heron. It has feathers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have my final clue. Uh -oh. I'm gonna do it. It's a flamingo. Oh, flamingo. <laughs> oh, man. You could have started with pink. I could have, but I opted not to. Yeah. So you you made it categories. hard. Oh, man. OK. So flamingo. I went to show all the categories. Yeah, that yeah. was very nice. So that's concept kids. That is concept kids. All right. Uh, next, Rich, do you want to talk about evolution in the beginning? Sure. OK. Yeah. I can help you clean this up. Evolution in the beginning is a really great uh, kids version of the evolution series. We did a stream with Oceans, which is sort of a, a continuation of the evolution series that you can hopefully find on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Um, but evolution is a very simple and accessible version of the evolution games. What we're doing in this game is we're trying to make the most successful species that we can make. And a species measures its success in this game by having a high population and by eating lots of food. So at the end of the game, if you've eaten a ton of food over the course of the game and you have a high population, um, you're gonna get lots and lots of points. It's also got these fun little food bags for while you're eating up all the different uh, type of food there is. You can either eat plant food if you're a regular species, an herbivore, or you might evolve the trait of being a carnivore, in which case you're going to start eating the other species in the game. Um, I really, really like this game because it's a, it's just a, first of all, it's just really fun. And then uh, you're also getting exposed to, you know, the idea of how things interact in their environment. And this makes it much more uh, streamlined. If you've played regular evolution, it's going to be very straightforward. And if you haven't played regular evolution, it's a really great way to um, get into the series. I think it's important to talk about evolution, the series. Um, this is a game that is published by a local game company, North Star Games. Um, they first published regular evolution um, several years ago. And a bunch of um, hardcore gamers felt that it wasn't hard enough. Um, so then they came out with Evolution Climate, which is actually here in our stack, um, which if you have older kids is a fantastic science game. It not only includes all of the biology um, with defensive traits and um, traits that help you gain food and traits that are um, attacking and things like that. Um, it also includes this huge like kind of line of various different climate things that can happen. So it can get hotter and you'll have to evolve for heat or it'll get colder. You can even have an ice age and like what evolutionary traits are affected by the climate. And it's then, stressful in all the right scientific ways. <laughs> it is, it's very stressful. Having volcanoes go off can wipe out your um, creatures and all kinds of things like that. So I think for an older learner, either evolution or evolution climate, or like we already did oceans um, recently with one of the designers, 
Um, those are all great. I would say for probably 12, like, 10. yeah, I would say somebody who plays a lot of games, maybe fifth or sixth grade, but I would say it's definitely more middle school, yeah. high school. Um, this, however, then they came out with evolution, the beginning. Um, the, a child does probably need to know how to read. There is words on all of the cards, although I would think that they could probably memorize what some of the traits are. There's and, only 10 cards yeah. and they're color coded too. So the And they have pictures. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be, I think just starting to read would probably be able to play this, but we're gonna show you a couple rounds so that you can make up your mind. Yeah. And so this one is evolution in the beginning. It is for the box says ages eight plus, although I think Rich has taught it to kids as young as six That's um, true. for two to five players. And do you think 30 minutes is about fair? Uh, yes. Yeah. Your first game might take a little bit longer because mm -hmm. the complexity of the game comes from reading the different cards and learning how they interact. Uh, but as you're about to see, it's really not that tricky. On your turn, all you do is you're going to add two little food tokens here to the watering hole, which is what we're all competing over. You're also going to take one of the cards off the top of the deck, and it's got a little circle space here. Um, I don't know if I can show that. So there's this circle space here that you're trying to sure. fill up over the course of the game. Uh, and when you fill that, you're going to get food there, and that'll score you points and keep your species alive. Um, so every turn, you get one of those. I get one. Not until your turn. Oh, not until my turn. Okay, so, I don't get one. Yeah, so then you draw three cards. And these three cards you can use to do uh, a couple things. You can either use them to create another species, you could use them to increase the population of one of your species by putting them on top. So now there's, and the pictures are great too, there's these little little critters that are running around. So now I have two little critters running around and then a separate little critter over here that's gonna be different. Uh, I'm gonna say the last thing you can do is put a trait onto one of the species. This is a defensive trait, it's the trait of flight. And it means that no carnivore can come after my species unless it also flies. Uh, so, now, the last thing I have to do is uh, deal with the fact that I played a turn that was not very optimal because there's only two pieces of food there for me to eat and I have to feed all my species. They, they've got to eat. So I'm going to take one of the food and put it here on my flying creature because I've invested in it. And I'm going to take another one here and put it on this species, but there's still no more food. So oh, no. this population sadly is going to starve and it's going to get discarded. Oh. Yeah. So it's now the next player's turn. Okay. So you can go ahead and draw three cards. So that is my species. Mm -hmm. And then here are my three cards. And let's see what I got. You're also going to get two. Oh yeah, I get hole. two foods. Okay, so let's see. So don't look at my stuff. Um oh. I have some fat tissue feeling. here. <laughs> this species may eat two food per popula per population. But if I only have two food in there, uh, that's not super helpful. Um, I have flight and I have before receiving food, a carnivore loses one population when it attacks the species. So that seems pretty good, but the flight, a carnivore would need to fly to do that. I think that I am going to play flight on this guy and I am going to how many cards can I have on a creature? As many as you can. No, that's not true. I think it's like three or four. Uh, well, you can have three traits. Right, but three you can traits. increase the population. Right, right, right. But I can only have three traits at a time, right? Right. Okay, so then I'm going to also make him fat. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to play this as a second population. So I've got a fat bird. I've <laughs> yes. got two fat birds. So I'm going to take my two food. Sure and feed my fat bird. Um, one of the things that I love doing with um, evolution is coming up with what animal you're creating. I don't know what a fat bird is though. An ostrich. An ostrich, yeah, it could be. Although, uh, do ostriches fly? Uh, no. 
I don't here's think your so. food bag. I forgot oh, yeah. to go over this on my turn. So now that your turn is ending, uh huh, you get to put the food and tuck it into your bag so that at the end this of the game. This is gonna be points at the end of the game. My two points. Look how cute the bags are. They all have different bridges on them. Do the um traits count as points at the end of the game too, like in, in evolution? Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. So your traits will also count as points. Ooh. Basically, all the cards you have in front of you will give you points, as well as all the food in your bag. Sorry, my bag. But um, your <laughs> these don't give you points. So your population. Your population gives you points. Jessica? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You want to have a a lot of your creatures out in the game. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do on your turn is you can save cards for later. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I didn't tell Kathleen that, but now Melissa knows. Now so I know. There's a heavy favorite in the game uh -huh. because I've played uh, a terrible first turn. And <laughs> Kathleen has done well, but now Melissa knows the secret of evolution. Uh-huh. Okay. Turn it right side up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a carnivore. Uh -oh. And I'm going to save this card for later. So this is interesting. This is a carnivore. It can't eat from the watering hole. There's two food there in the watering hole. Here, you want to show them your carnivore? I do want to show them my carnivore. Because we That's add two food every Sorry. turn. Yeah. But your carnivore is going to be hungry. And it's not going to eat from there. It's going to eat one of the other species in the game. And if there's no other species belonging to other players, you're really bad at. I know that's camp. why I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not here. You can have that back before I make it. Well, this is very, very bad at shaky cam. Yeah. So if, if there's no species that other players <laughs> control, you'll have to eat your own species because it's still hungry. So you get to pick if you you'd can't like to eat, eat mine. This one or none of these because you're not flying. So it's oh, my poor species. This is a mean that's game. Yeah. Well, so I take this card. No, well, this he, card that card will die and you get a food. You oh, get a food. And get a food. And turn yeah. it into a plant. Got so it. my my species that did not have any traits on it that was not flying and could not adapt enough to its environment got picked off by the carnivore. So it was basically a squishy worm, and yeah. I ate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your carnivore ate the squishy worm. All right. Okay, so now it's your turn. Brings us back to my turn. So I'm gonna... oh, and you put your I put my yeah. little thing in my bag. And it's there used game. to be. <laughs> There's no meat in this one. This one doesn't have the double-sided yeah. meat. So in the regular evolution, one side is plants and one side is meat. This one just has all plants, but you pretend it's meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we didn't eat from here last time because Melissa is a carnivore. So I'm going to add two more, and now there's four. Uh, Whoa, food. now Super. Rich could get a bunch of food this turn. Maybe Melissa face. didn't do as well as she I could I just want to eat people. <laughs> So I think what, oh, I forgot. I also get a, a critter every Do turn. Do you get another critter every turn? Every turn you get a critter in, oh. in the evolution of oh. the beginning. Okay, well, wow. I don't that's know if you nice. got a free critter. I didn't get a free critter. Okay, you I get a free, a free critter. critter. There it is. So it got one of those food. Yeah. Look at that. And that gets in your bag. Look at how successful I was. And I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go ahead and add some traits. I'm going to make another. This critter is going to be a scavenger. So every time a, a carnivore attacks, it's going to get some free food. And it's Where does it get food from? From the, the excess. Pile? It okay. doesn't get from there. Yeah. Um, it's also going to fly because that seems like the popular thing to do. And uh, this is also going to be a scavenger. We have two flying scavengers. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of my turn, you get two food. I get two food. Okay. And that goes into my little food bag, and it's Kathleen's turn. She's going to get so, another little critter. I have two food, and I get a critter. Okay, and then I get three cards. Mm -hmm. And I will once again show y'all cards. Um, <laughs> oh, those are good ones. Uh-oh, um, uh-oh. Yeah. Somebody made an octopus. Oh, Bob. is it Louie Bob? Louie Louis Bob, Bob here. Hey, Louie Bob, how are you? Um, okay, so I've got scavenger carnivore and fertile. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay. Um, so I am going to make my new creature a fertile scavenger. And I'm going to make my big creature a carnivore. Uh -oh. Yep. And um, so then I am going to with my carnivore here, see, I'm a fat flying carnivore. I don't, I have no idea what animal that is. That's terrifying. It <laughs> is. So now I get to eat people. It's true. Um, who am I going to eat? I want to eat, who can I eat? I can eat you can anybody. Eat anybody. You can eat anybody yep. 
Um, I don't like the idea of your scavenger, so I'm going to take that. Okay. Here. So when you this eat this food, that. may eat two food for per population. So that I get one food. You get one food, and so does the scavenger that's still alive, as well as your own scavenger. Yeah. So now, um, eat two food for population. So now I can eat something else. Yes. Um, okay, so then I'm going to eat that one. I guess I'm going to eat all of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. So I eat everything. You, yep, she gobbled us all up. Well, now I'm sad. Okay. <laughs> sad, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and then I got five food. Five food. Five food. Um, and then and after that, I Team Kathleen. Team Kathleen is the <laughs> clear winner in this game. And that is that was my turn, and I'm going to eat all of this. If we were to play a full game of this, we would go until this deck is completely depleted. So there's still a chance for everybody to catch up. <laughs> oh, there's tons of chances. Mm. One thing that I think is very important to note is that in Evolution, the beginning, it's actually, I kind of, there's a part of it that I like better, at least when I played it the one time, mm -hmm. because it was way faster than regular Evolution. And there's a lot more attacking other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if your child really hates getting eaten or whatever, you might actually look at regular evolution because although it's slightly more complicated and there are carnivores in it, it is much easier to, to defend yeah. against the carnivores in evolution and they are not necessarily, I mean, it's not as prevalent in the game. I mean, yeah. there certainly is a, it's a viable strategy in evolution, but it's not, they're not as attacky, I think, as evolution in the beginning. Regular evolution has cards like warning call that, that lets you warn the other animals around you and stuff like that. There's more ways to interact. There's a lot more defensive ways and a lot more, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in evolution, a lot more traits in regular evolution. I also think this one, it's much easier to rebuild your population very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So having your animals get eaten isn't the biggest deal. But I think it's cool because the kids really do have to think about how do I defend myself in the wild against these other things. And sometimes, like I said, a fat bird that's a carnivore, mm -hmm. is that a realistic animal? Is it not a realistic animal? Are there fertile scavengers out there? So I think it's a really interesting game to start a conversation and do research about the animals that you're pull, picking up. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah it's a great Later list. versions of evolution even have little Latin uh, words that you can like, put together. Like to together and make up silly names. Make yes. species name. It's really fun. Yes, uh, definitely. I love this game. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic game. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So that's how evolution in the beginning works. All right, Kathleen, do you want to talk about chemistry collects? Um, no, I thought let's go through some of the genius games okay. and talk about them, and then we'll do chemistry flux kind of towards the end. All right, so sounds like the good. Last five so, or ten minutes. We've had some of these games here at Labyrinth before, but we just got a whole bunch of these genius games back in the store today, which is super exciting because I got to open a lot of them. All right, so these are all like super, super, super here, educational here. games, and you can put them out under the big cam maybe or i can hold them under the shaky cam too yeah so this is how do you say that word virulence virulence like virulence i'm so virulent all right so virulence is a game for eight plus two to five players and you can play it in about 15 minutes um we played a couple of rounds earlier this afternoon i would say 15 minutes is probably fair um and in this game you are viruses trying to take over a host and you are trying to gather cards and points in order to uh, be the best virus that you can be and take over the host but with by having the most points. Um, it's fast, it's fun. Um, you get to learn about the different uh, types of viruses and the sense of their different shapes and some of the things that give them a little boost, uh, uh, like uh, uh, encapsulating shells and things like that. Um, so a good thing to open up a conversation. I would say eight plus could certainly play the game, but a middle schooler or high schooler would get a lot more out of just sort of the vocabulary and things like that because they're probably learning that in school a little bit more than our eight grade eight, um, eight year old friends. Um, but a lovely game if Kathleen wants to show some of the card art. Yeah, I can show some pretty of the cool. Card art. Um, I think that it's an interesting game because you're actually bidding on which cards you want to pick up. Um, so. There are a lot of different cards here, I'll show you. Um, so helical, 
so the kind of structure of a virus. This one, you will get greater um, scores the more you have. Um, there are vaccines that obviously, if you want to be a virus, vaccines are bad for you because you will lose points if you get a vaccine. Um, there are things like spherical envelopes. Um, and in this one, you if you have the most, you get 12 points. The second most, you get minus six points, or I mean six points. And if you have the least of them, you get minus six points. So you're not a very good virus if you have the least um, spherical envelopes. There's also genomes, which straight up give you points. And the way that it's played is you basically have number cards and you're bidding. There are going to be three of these cards out and you're going to bid for which order you get to take them um, in. And so whoever plays the highest card will get to select first. Whoever plays the second highest card will get to select second and third player or third highest card gets the third card. Um, and then there's a mechanism for being able to pick up all your cards before again. Um, so it's an interesting game where you have to think about what other people have played, kind of a little bit of press your luck because you don't know what's going to come out later or whether this is going to be the best. And you have to plan and plot a little bit based on your scoring kind of strategy. Um, cute, as Melissa and I were saying, I don't think it has a ton of inherent educational aspects to it. I think it's a it was a pretty fun game about an interesting topic, especially at this time with COVID and stuff. Um, I think that it's really interesting to talk about how viruses work. And this is like Melissa said, I think it's a good kind of reinforcing mm -hmm. type of idea to expose someone to a scientific concept. Um, but I don't know that you would like just playing this game is not going to teach you how a virus is made. They might remember um, a couple of the chase things. But. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, that's some fine. of it's- That's a very great outcome, I think. Yeah, I think it's good. And it's and it was a pretty fun game when we were yeah, playing it. it. Like, I, I liked it. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is one of my favorite of these games, and it is called Psychosis. And it's a it's method upside of- Upside down. What's upside down? This is- it's upside down, oh, it's upside the down camera, for the camera. Remember? Oh, that's right. I mirrored things. I'm yeah. not good with the camera directions. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, friends. Um, so this game is Psychosis, and it is all about our great journey of how a cell works, which as a former middle school science teacher, I have spent many years of my life talking about this. So this is a fabulous topic. Um, and I can tell you that this board game like really gets the essence of how a cell works, even down to the that beautiful board you can see here that looks exactly like the inside of the cell. Um, so this is a worker placement style game where you are going to have different colored uh, Erlenmeyer flasks. I'm going to grab this pink one. And you're going to take turns placing these flasks on different areas of the board, depending on what it is you are trying to do. And you're going to be gathering materials from the cell. So things like carbohydrates and lipids and mRNA and enzymes. And you're going to use those in combination with things that you might remember from high school biology. Hey, Legends DM. Um, hey, Legend Sam. Like ATP and uh, glucose and respiration and all those cool things in order to build different um, parts of the cell. So you might be building, let's see, um, like steroid, steroid hormones or protein hormones or what else do we have? Enzymes or brand new cells. So all of those are goals that you can do in the cell and they're all things that cells actually do. So this one is way cool for reinforcing that cell stuff, which on its own, I have to be perfectly honest, can be a little dry. Um, but this is a really good hands-on way of kind of visualizing something that's microscopic and we can't really show kids or high schoolers very well. So that is one of my favorites in this line. I really love, um, I've, I've played this a few times and I loved how it actually kind of flows through mm -hmm. the cell as you're working, you have to do things kind of up at the top of the cell and work your way through the cell to be able to complete things. So not only does it show you all of the cellular type of functions, it almost in the order that you have to collect things shows you how the cell functions um, by creating different things that feed into other things. Um, there's smoothie R, there's um, rough and rough. 
you know, mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. I know, I <laughs> love mitochondria. Say, yeah. Plasma membrane, all that great stuff. Um, and this game is for ages 10 plus, two to five players, and 60 to 90 minutes, which I say is, from my memory, is pretty accurate. Um, again, with the 10 plus thing, um, at least in the states that I have taught, cells aren't really taught in this much depth until middle school. Um, but hey, a kid, my a ten year old who really likes science would probably be super into this. I would think even as young as eight could potentially play it. Yeah. If um if they were really into they like into anatomy and biology and things like that. Um, the board is double sided. Yeah. The board is double sided for player count. Yeah, player uh, count. Yeah. You can adjust the player count based on the board. All right, and then the last uh, genius game I'm going to talk about for now, and I think I got this right this time. Yeah, it's Subatomic. Um, this one is a new to us as of this afternoon game, and this one looks so cool. Yeah, um, Melissa and I have already made a date to play it. Yeah, this one looks really neat, and I'm not going to show you all the pieces, but I do want to pull out like your scoring card here. Um, and so when you are, this is a deck building game, so you are gathering different. Um, components of atoms, so electrons, quarks, neutrons, protons, in order to build different chemical elements, um, like beryllium and lithium. And you're trying to get the correct number of protons, neutrons, and electrons to make that chemical, which is great. So you're going to keep track of those by moving these little glass pieces around on each of these little dots inside of your atom, which is super cool. And it looks really nice at the end of it. Um, this one really hits home the idea of, you know, quarks make up protons and neutrons and photon rays make up electrons. And oh, by the way, here are these scientists that also discovered many of these things. Um, so this one I think is also a great um, addition to like your science education library. Um, again, reinforcing all those like Niel Bohr models of electrons and atoms is super great. Again, I know that this is not like the current viewpoint of what we think atoms look like, but it gets the idea down. Uh, which is most important and it's just it's really cool and that is subatomic yeah in a so, nutshell <laughs> so those are um some of the new science games we've got in we also and i think i wanted to talk just for a second about um both our live twitch stream and um other things that we're doing i just sent out the september newsletter today so if you get our newsletter um, all of this is in there, but um, if you don't get our newsletter, go to our website and sign up to get our newsletter. We usually only send out really one thing a month, um, but it was talking about how we're doing Twitch, and what we set up today is all of the Twitch streams we are recording, and we're saving them, and within a week, um, giving us at least seven days to do this, but within a week, we're posting them on our YouTube channel, channel, which is Labyrinth Game Shop, and it will have a link on our website pretty soon if it doesn't already. Um, and you can watch the Twitch the, uh, live streams that we've already done. Some of the ones that we've already done, I think, are fantastic for science, too. There's Wingspan, which you've probably heard us talk about before. Yeah. Mariposas just came out, which talks about the life cycle of um, monarch, butterflies. monarch butterflies. And there's um, Oceans, the Oceans game that's in part of the Evolution series. Um, all of those we have already played, so we're not going to really talk about them today. But um, they're fantastic. And uh, oh, thank you, Taylor. Uh, so Taylor, uh, Subatomic says 14 plus on the box and cytosis is 10 plus yeah and i would say the 14 plus for subatomic is correct yeah there's a lot of stuff at mm -hmm. least when we looked at subatomic because we were hoping we could play it and melissa and i definitely need to play it before yeah. we can teach people rules to that one mm -hmm. um there was a lot going on in it i would say someone who could play clank or something along those lines could probably play it. So I know we do have some kids yeah. who shop here who could probably do it, who would be younger than 14, but they would have to be pretty hardcore gamers, and, I think. Yeah, again, I think it gets a lot easier if you have some like basic chemistry knowledge of the game, because otherwise you're gonna be like, what, what is it? Why am I doing this? And it really does, it makes sense, I promise, when you're like building all these things together, it makes scientific sense. Um, but if you don't know what that is, it's just gonna be like, so I put these random cards together and I make a thing, yay. Yeah, yeah, I think, yes, yeah, okay. 
Um, there are, and as I said, there's tons more. Um, so we have, we're going to put all the things on YouTube. So that will be there for your future reference. Um, the other thing is, and I mentioned this last week, is on our online store, uh, store.labyrinthgameshop.com, and Melissa can put that in the chat. We have the game schooling. Um, we have the game schooling filter. So if you click into games or puzzles, or if you click on the very first um, thing that says fall in love with games, it'll bring up our entire collection. And I'm then shaky cam. here, you want to try and do I shaky can. cam? I but Melissa's still. going to try and show you. So, um, so you can. So there it is over here on the left is all your game schooling options. Right. And then if you click on science. Uh huh. Oh gosh, I have to do this left handed and hold this camera. Science, Yay! all of the games that we think um, really support science. And if you didn't do it with games, if you just clicked on the very first banner that says mm -hmm. fall in love with games, it brings up our entire collection, which includes, we have some really cool books that are like mysteries you can solve with science and 101 things you should know about science. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of jigsaw puzzles that are periodic tables and solar, solar systems. systems and lots of cool things like that. Um, so next we're gonna show you one of my favorite chemistry games. This is Chemistry Flux. Um, I love Chemistry Flux. Let's see. Um, Flux is a game. If you do not know about Flux, Flux is a game who was that was made by local game designer um, Andy Looney and his wife Kristen Looney. Um, they were actual real life rocket scientists, and they worked at Goddard Space Station, and they um, loved making games. And so they created Flux and they ended up quitting working at Goddard Space Station and just make games for a living, which I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, they're brilliant people, they're really fun, but they created Flux. Flux is a game which based on its name, it's because the game is always in Flux. Um, it's, a, it's an incredibly simple game to play, but it can intimidate people, especially adults. So that's why we wanted to show everybody what it was. Um, the original Flux was kind of hippie-ish with um, <laughs> cookies and milk and peace and love and um, things like that. Um, but in the recent years, uh, they have started making an educational series. And so there is Chemistry Flux that they came out with. Um, there is Anatomy Flux, which is fantastic. Um, Anatomy Flux was actually um, Dr. Layla Zucker, who is a local, well, she was a local ER doctor. She's now working on some of the Native American reservations, but she worked at Howard in the ER and she worked for the VA. Um, she helped the loonies create Anatomy Flux and it has so much amazing information in it. She tried to make it um, accessible for younger kids but she included enough information in here that you could actually study for med school classes and stuff with it. It's, it's incredible. Um, and then there's also Astronomy Flux, which is um, really great. I got to play Astronomy Flux with two guys from NASA, which was amazing. <laughs> um, so we're gonna play Chemistry Flux, just a few rounds. One of the things with Flux is that you never exactly know how long a game's going to go because the game <laughs> changes as you're playing it. Um, one of the very simple things is you start with these rules. That is it. That is all of the rules to the game when you first begin. You draw one card and you play one card, and that is it. However, the cards have rules on them. So this one, if we played this as our one card, all of a sudden we would have a hand limit of four cards and now our hand limit changes. There are also goal cards and this would all of a sudden give us a goal for this game. We are trying to get sulfur, hydrogen and oxygen. And if we had all of those, what are called keepers 
in front of us, we would win if we played this gold card. And we'd make sulfuric acid. And we would make sulfuric battery acid. acid. Do yeah. not do that at home, children. Yes. No, thank um, you. These are keeper cards. Keeper cards are just played directly in front of you. There are cards that will make other people um, steal cards from you. Sometimes there'll be things that will make you discard keeper cards. But keepers are basically the structure of the game. These are the things that you want to collect to be able to make goals. Um, the cool thing about all the different versions of Flux is that usually they have um, in-game rules and things like that that affect whatever the theme of it is. So this one was really cool. There's one, if you have helium in front of you and somebody plays this oh, no. helium rule, you have to talk really high like that or you have to give up your helium. <laughs> I know okay. what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> so we're going to play a really quick hand because we have about 10 minutes left and we will do this. One, okay. you start with three cards. Everybody always has three cards in Looney Lab games. It's a thing. Um, and whoever draws first is first player. So I'm going to be first player because I drew first. That's the way it works. Um, so there are also action cards. Um, so I am going to play my one card. It's an action card and it basically says use what you take and I get to take a random card from another player and play it. I am going to take this one and I get to play it and I got aluminum. So now aluminum. I have aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. There's no I there. No, I, know. I disagree it's with the British. Aluminum. I had such a hard time saying aluminum when I was little. I don't know if it was because I was secretly British, but there you go. <laughs> um, so now I have aluminum and I still have three cards in my hand. So everything's good. I played one card um, and that was it. All right. So I'll draw one and I, you. this is an action. So That's an away. action. So that goes in the discard pile, right? It is not a new rule. However, I will play a new rule, which is that there's a hand limit of four. So oh no. Four cards and now it's Melissa's turn. Do I draw one at the beginning of my turn? I forget. Yeah. You so now we oh, can yeah, yeah, only yeah. have four hand cards in our hand. I hate hand limits in this game. It makes it hard oxygen. to win. Okay, so Melissa has oxygen. So I'm going to draw one. And ooh, I am going to, I'm going to add a new rule too. And I'm playing play three. So now this is a cool thing. So there are play and draw rules. And if you play a play rule and it says play on the side of it, then you actually get rid of the play rule that was before. So it's no longer play one, it is now play three, but we can only draw one. So we're not gonna be able to play three very long unless we can get a better draw. And we still have our hand limit of four. So as you can see, the rules are starting to be in flux. So now, this rule takes effect immediately on my um, on my turn. And so I now have to play all of the things that are in my hand because I have to, well, I played one. So now I have to play two more. So I'm gonna play a Bunsen burner as another keeper. And I am going to play a goal of fool's gold. Mm, all right. So now if anybody can get iron, and sulfur, um, they would make pyrite, fool's gold, and they would win the game, which doesn't work out really well for me because I have aluminum and a bunch of burner, but that's all. Right. All right. Okay. I'll draw one and then I have to play three because yep. of the rule. Um, so I will play first, I'm gonna make a new goal. Okay, and that takes, that takes over that one and that one gets discarded. Right. So now so the now. goal is uh chlorargyrite, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is silver, silver and chloride. <laughs> um but Oops. I'm gonna replace that goal because it's too hard to say <laughs> with the Statue of Liberty Green, which is uh copper, oxygen, and carbon. So the next thing I'll do is my last card, which is steal a keeper. Oh, no. Action, and I think I should take the oxygen. Oh, I think you should. Ah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so he stole Melissa's oxygen and he has a goal out that is Statue of Liberty Green. Bye. 
Fine. Steal my stuff. See if it bothers me. <laughs> all right. I'm going to play a new rule. Play all but one. Oh, okay. So now anytime you cover up a rule, oh. it goes away. And then that one. So I played the lazy way. Like, uh. okay. All right. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do carbon dioxide, but I don't want to do that. I'll do aluminum carbide. Oh, cool. So if I can find carbi carbon, I win. And then I don't have any carbon. Oh, I really hope I can find carbon. I thought you were supposed to play all but one. Yeah, you're supposed to play all but one. <laughs> I'll take this one back. It's late. I don't sleep. OK. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so now I draw one and play one. Oh, I don't want to play either one of these. Okay, I will play, I'll get rid of that goal, and I'm playing corundum, aluminum, and oxygen. So if I could figure out a way to steal your oxygen, I could win. But if you figure out a way to steal my aluminum, you win. Uh oh. Yeah. Yep. And because of the way this rule works, if you squint and read the small text, I actually draw two cards this turn because I don't have any and I have to play all but one. Uh -huh. So, give me a chance. Huh. Uh, I don't think he has a chance. He's making noises. Yeah, I'll just put uh, calcium down. Mm, okay, then you turn. get to draw two, too. Oh, no, you still have one over there. Yep. Oh, hmm. Oxygen. Silver is Why are there two oxygens? I don't know, but there are. Oh, maybe it's. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Well, there's more than one oxygen, and there are. Yeah, like maybe you here need. And here, We're very here, fortunate. Here, that more here. Than one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right. On that note, I'm drawing. Um, but you don't get to sit in the middle anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I am playing a new rule. Oh no. Um, before your final play, if you are not empty handed, you may discard your entire hand and draw three new cards. Your turn then ends immediately. So I am going to discard my entire hand and draw three new cards. Okay. And that is the end of my hand. That's the end of my thing. Sure. Turn. All right, so I will draw. Draw. You play all but one. Um, as you can see, this will get more and more complicated as more and more rules come out. I usually like to keep the play rules and the draw rules near the basic rules and then add kind of a line of new rules. And it's good when you're doing a turn to kind of look and go, okay, hand limit, get on with it, and then keep going down with the rules. I think that that's the most confusing part, especially for adults who are not used to things changing. I have found that kids love this game. Like kids love being able to play silly things and change the rules. <laughs> and I don't like the hand limit that I played earlier, so I'm going to trash that. Okay. Uh, so you're playing an action. And then I'm also going to do the get on with it if I have. Oh, no, wait, that's before my final play. Oh, was I not supposed to do that then? Well, if you play all but one, right, your final oh, play has already my, happened. Yeah. That's okay. That's oh, kind of flux is getting I don't know on. that I was, yeah, I don't know <laughs> that I did that right then. Okay. I find that, ooh, <laughs> don't pee. You want we to, said ooh, and I looked. Yeah. You Do you want to do the get on with it? Because you have to do it before you play. Okay. I don't want to. I want okay. to do glassware, <laughs> because I love glassware. Ooh. ooh, you need two of the things, but it doesn't include my Bunsen burner. No, it does not. Oh, man. All right. But glassware. Okay, is that it? That's it's all part your of turn. Chemistry. Okay, so yeah. now I draw one. Yes. Okay. Oh man, that's a good one. Okay, I am going to play an action. I get to draw three and play two of them. Ooh. Um, and I'm going to play that and that not glassware. No, but I got more keepers. Mm -hmm. And that is it. Mm, but you have to play all but one. Oh, I have to play all but one. Oh, okay. So now I have goggles, which I think are glassware, but apparently don't count. They're not They're glass. Not glass. Huh. 
And then I will have the lab coat bonus, another new rule. The lab coat bonus is if you are wearing an actual lab coat oh. or if you have the lab coat keeper in front of you, you get to draw an extra card on your turn. Interesting. <laughs> I have a lab coat. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so I draw one. Um, I'm going to actually discard these to get three cards because of the get on with it. Okay, and then that's the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. I am... We need more draws. I have a way for you to win, but I'm not going to play it. Because that going to discard all of these <laughs> and draw three new ones. Okay. So I don't want that. Here, it's my turn. Okay. Ooh. I am going to draw. And I too am going to discard all of my cards <laughs> and draw three. All right. Okay. Draw one. Ooh, jackpot. Draw three extra cards. One, two, three. Now you have to play all but one. Yeah, get on with it. Okay. <laughs> Picking, uh, okay. Um, I'll get hydrogen and copper and a beaker. Your copper's upside down. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, and uh, silicon. Oh my gosh, you got tons of it's like keepers. the whole periodic table over there. Yeah. Oh no, I have I something that would let you win. Exchange keepers. I will uh -oh. give you a beaker for your Bunsen burner. Oh man. Wait, why would you do that? Because I could win that one. Oh, why? Oh, fine. Oh, I, free, I didn't realize that was the goal. <laughs> why are you helping Team Kathleen win? <laughs> team Kathleen, Team Kathleen. All right, let's see. Play all but one. I'm going to play a test tube. Ooh, I'm going to play your test tube. No, I am going to play an action. Everybody gets one. Set your hand aside. Count the number of players in the game and draw enough cards to give one to each player. I get to decide who gets what. Mm. Mm. Give me good stuff. Um, this one to you. I'm going to keep this one and you. Get an explosion. I get sodium plus water. Explosion. And then I have to play this one. Here it is my turn. Oh man, look, he got AG and he has. Ugh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like this at all. I think we like it. Okay, I don't like it at all. I don't like it. I like chemistry. Okay, so I get to draw one. Yep. And then I am going to play my draw five, which gives me four extra ones. One, two, three, four. And then just so you know, Kathleen, it did 631. Okay. Uh -huh. And now I'm going to play all but one. And is there anything I can do that will let me win this game right now? Um, no. Shoot. Okay. Well, it's 631, so we have to end anyway. Um, so I guess we will leave this to your imagination of who wins, Team Kathleen. Um, but uh, yeah, I was going to draw two oh. and use them, um, and things were going to happen. I was hoping um, to steal your goggles so that I could play this card. In the that would have been nice. I was Very hoping important. to find um, the lab coat so Ooh. that I could play the Thank goggles and lab coat. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that is science. Um, stand back. Well, We're doing science, science games. <laughs> science games. <laughs> and next week we will be talking about math games, which is like my second favorite thing. So. <laughs> I love math games too. Math games. There are so many math games. Oh my like, goodness! Almost yeah. Every game. <laughs> right, but we're gonna focus on a like, few for math each. Math yeah, mathy math games, and we're gonna focus on a few that are good for younger kids, and then one or two that are good for like more advanced. Yeah. Math. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Play lots of games this week. Play games with your families. Um, and I hope you learn a lot. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye.